Okay, so today we're going to be going over the central dogma and protein synthesis. Um, and so for those who are watching this that are, are taking a genetics class that may need some help, this is probably not going to be the right lecture for you. We'll be going more in detail um, in future lectures, but for now this is just for people studying for the MCAT and a very general overview. Okay, so just to start, what is the central dogma? So the central dogma um, it has to do with protein synthesis. So it will tell us how proteins are made. Um, so specifically, going from DNA, uh, DNA goes into RNA, and RNA goes into protein. Okay, so that is the central dogma, that fact right there. We're not going to skip from DNA all, we, all the way going to protein, and we're not going to skip um, RNA going straight to protein without having any DNA to begin with. Okay? So that's just what the central dogma is. Um, so from DNA to RNA, that's called something called transcription. And from RNA to protein, it's called translation. All right, so transcription is DNA, and specifically to mRNA, all right, messenger RNA. Um, and so we're going to see the important thing is where does it occur? So in eukaryotes versus prokaryotes, um, where does it occur? Well, it's going to occur in the same place that DNA is located in, and that would be in the nucleus. And that's only for eukaryotes. But the same thing goes for prokaryotes. It's going to happen in the same place where DNA is located. But there is no nucleus, so it's going to be in the cytoplasm. All right? So what does this? So RNA polymerase does this, and this is an enzyme similar to DNA polymerase, uh, where it'll lay down the tracks. All right? um, and so it'll convert DNA into RNA. All right? And we'll see exactly what the difference between DNA and RNA is. All right? So DNA versus RNA. So if we have RNA on this side and we'll put DNA on this side, we'll go over some of the very key points that you'll need to know. All right? So the first thing is that RNA is single-stranded versus DNA is double-stranded. All right? So we have that double helix versus just a single strand of RNA. All right? The nucleotides involved will be A, U, G, and C versus A, T, G, and C. Um, so we see that what has changed is the T and the U. Um, and so if we can remember A binds with T and G binds with C, so the same would be true, G binds with C, and so now we can pretty much assume that A is going to bind with U. All right? um, the next thing we're going to look at is ribose versus deoxyribose. All right? So what does that mean? So remember ribose looks something like this. And we had our little CH2 group right here and our bases, but that's not exactly ribose. That's adding stuff onto it. Um, deoxyribose looks something like this. And this is the sugar backbone. All right? So deoxyribose lost um, one of the hydroxy groups. All right? And so the final thing we're going to be looking at um, is the speed. So the speed, uh, how long do these things last? So the, the amount that RNA lasts is a very short amount of time versus DNA is very long. You can imagine that your DNA will stay with you forever. Um, and so it won't be degraded versus RNA will be degraded very quickly because uh, say you don't need that certain protein to be um, constantly translated uh, in the future from RNA to protein. Well, you wouldn't want it so you would have to degrade it and that's why it has a very short amount of life. Alright, so we saw what transcription was and it was pretty much just um, RNA or uh, so sorry, DNA to RNA. Okay, so now the next thing we're going to be looking at is translation. And this is a very general overview. Um, translation again is RNA going into protein. Okay, so RNA to protein, um, this is the, the key part and it occurs in the ribosome. Um, and so ribosomes, um, they're made up of different things. Um, and so in eukaryotes, uh, there's a there's a small subunit and there's a big subunit. And so for eukaryotes, we have something that's called a 40S and a 60S, and that makes an 80S. And in prokaryotes, we have a 50S and a 30S, and that makes 70S. All right? And these are just the size of them and the, the way they um, um, sediment in a centrifuge. All right. And so translation. So this translation, uh, pretty much all we will really need to know is that it goes from RNA to protein. Um, and there's three different sites. Um, we have the A, the P, 
um, and the east side and different things happen in each one. It's not so much important, we just need to know that there's three sides um, for the MCAT. It's just that translation has three different sides, the E, the P, and the A. Um, the E is the exit site, the P is the peptidal site, um, it's where we have the growth, and the A is the uh, amino acid um, site, and it's where all the, the, the tRNAs will add all the amino acids there. All right. Um, so another thing that we'll have to know is the start codons and the stop codons. All right, so the start codons in translation will be A, U, and G, um, and the stop codons will be A, U, A, G, U, A, A, and U, G, A. All right, um, and so, you know, there's a lot more detail that we can go into for translation, but this is just the bare minimum, just some of the facts that we'll need to know.